morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all for coming today. So let us present to you an innovative project that can forever change the world of mental health control. As you can see here, we have an outline of what, our, what we are going to be discussing in this presentation. We are going to be discussing our uh, motivation, why we selected our current project, the requirements for it, as well as our implementations of hardware, software, the cost, and our current schedule for our next semester, and potentially future plans. Shall we meet the team now? All right. Hello, as all of you know me already, I'm Cesar Moyoja. I'm a computer engineer, and our main role in this project is to apply machine learning algorithms and create a database for our data. Hi everyone, I'm Chase Imhoff. Um, my major is computer engineering and I focus more on the software side of things for this project. My name is Daniel Mouye. I am the leader of this project. I am also one uh, the man that did the most reason. Uh, did research for the psychological parts as well as the components and has made sure everything is running smoothly for this project. Hello guys, I'm Wadley Fareem. I'm an electrical engineer working on the sensors and the electronic components of the research. But now let's talk to you more about our motivation and competition in the market. So currently right now in the world, there's an increase in negative emotion worldwide. And we want to be able to combat the misuse and the non-controlled stress levels happening to everyone. Currently in the market right now, there's only focus on physical health and physical fitness as well as few meditation techniques. We want to be able to create a device that will be able to help you control your anger, control anger management, lower your life stress levels, and be able to feel more at a better mood and calm throughout the day. Um, so initially, we actually uh, were thinking about implementing what we call an emotional music player that catered to various different undesired emotions. But uh, we decided that it would be better to implement a wrist device so that uh, it can be easier to use and more portable, and therefore it can address you know, different issues. So here's a brief summary of our project. So let's go through. So we needed to apply this technique, a uh, uh, mental health technique, for people who are easily angered. Essentially, we're going to monitor the different three different threshold values that are given to us through biofeedback on a microcontroller. And this is going to activate different services. Services that are through HTTP requests are able to display our data in a database. And that database can be used to process more data and use machine learning to essentially improve our service. Now, talking about more of our system requirements, as we mentioned, we're going to be using our biofeedbacks, in particular our temperature, pulse sensor, and galvanic skin response, basically sensing the skin conductance and resistance of the user. And we're going to be taking that information and submitting it into the database that we'll be talking about. So with the software component of this project, we have the MySQL database, which is what we applied. We also additionally linked it with MyPHP admin, which is an easier interface to utilize. And this provides the framework that contains our data in order to output three different services. Our buzzer warnings, our music, and our suggested actions. Um, so this objective tree demonstrates uh, some needs that we wanted to address and um, in the market we wanted to make sure that uh, this device is easy to use, reliable and comfortable and below you can see um, how we address these uh, needs. Here we have an AHP of the uh, uh, components we use as well as the variables we are willing to test. Above is the AHP of the microcontrollers. You can tell that we have the Raspberry Pi, the Arduino, and the Arduino uh, Uno, and the Arduino Nano. We went with the Nano because it fits the size that we want to do, as well as it's uh, powerful enough to do uh, to hold the information that we need. As for the set uh, sensor that we wish to do, we wanted to make sure that we went with easy enough to read as well as accurate enough. Is the reason why we went with pulse um, temperature and uh, got like skin response instead of blood pressure because blood pressure would become a burden on the user at that point. So this is um, our engineering and marketing trade-off matrix and it basically shows um, how our engineering requirements uh, correlate with our marketing requirements and um, for example um, with increased accuracy as an engineering requirement um, we produce a higher reliability for um, users. 
So here we have a pretty brief overall system architecture diagram. So as you can see, this displays a symbiotic relationship that exists between the different protagonists in our project. As you can see, the user interact with the three different sensors that we discussed. And this allows information, the input data, that is processed in the Arduino. And the Arduino essentially communicates with our server that contains a database that holds the different values we need in order to process our data and output different services. Here is the related theory for the project. When our body gets angry or stressed, we have an increase in heart rate, an increase in temperature, an increase of a hormone called cortisol. Cortisol is a very, not the best thing in short spurts. It can be very useful in uh, long periods of time. It can start uh, harming your body. And these attributes can be read with different sensors, different ones that we have purchased. And on the related equation side, we have an equation for our temperature sensor where we took the resistance which was calculated in the code and was able to uh, calculate uh, the temperature based off that, converting it into Fahrenheit and, uh, uh, instead of Celsius. And for the heart rate and the convex scan response, we're mostly taking the voltage from that as well as Ohm's law, using Ohm's law to make sure that we are getting the correct values. All right. So as you can see, we have a brief use case diagram as well that describes, it's like a general description of our project. So simply we have the actor, which is a private user, and its use cases, which are the buzzer, the music, and the suggested actions, slash audio, which are our three main services. The buzzer is activated anytime the pulse the three different sensors detect that the threshold is above its normal value. Once the user is notified, he has the option to output music that would help relieve the symptoms of anger, and he could also receive suggested actions. There are different actions the user can take to help mitigate the heightened emotional state in which he's in. Now, just a breakdown of all the components and electronic um, circuits that we're going to be using. As I mentioned before, our Arduino is going to be our main central control unit for the process of all the data from the sensors and to the output and connected to the database. Um, in terms of our pulse sensor, GSR sensor, and temperature sensor, GSR being one of our main components, we're going to be controlling the thresholds of the other two in order to get that skin response, temperature, and the heart rate of the user in order so that we can use in our algorithm designate when they are angry. And as we mentioned before, our electronic buzzer giving nothing more than a slight vibration onto the person's wrist in order to identify that the person is getting angry out of electric shock. And now uh, here's a breakdown of our circuit analysis and our circuit connection that we use. As you can see here, we connected some few resistors in order to limit the current in order to ensure that our sensors were not functioning or being burned out with too much energy. And as you notice, going into our analog and being display and output onto the buzzer. We were using all these techniques in order to ensure that there's safety and reliability for the user in terms of using the device. Now talking about a little bit more on our software side. Okay, so the software implementation. So as I mentioned before, we have the Arduino microcontroller, which is the main unit that receives the, the sense biofeedback to the XAM server. XAM server is simply a platform that has a server which contains our database that's gonna essentially contain our data. And that data, well, is processed through three different PHP files. First one, info.php, which essentially creates the request needed to connect the Arduino board to our database. We also have the try jsom.php, which retrieves the data and collects it in an array that can be displayed later on using the getdata.php file. So as I mentioned before, the DAB simply functions as a server manager that's going to contain our database via my PHP my app. We also have the three different files, which I just discussed. Info.php enabling the sending and receiving of the data that we need. The try json.php, which creates a HTTP request and sends this uh, data to string. And now we have the Arduino code. Um, so pictured above is just the code that basically links the Arduino um, with our server. When we decided to do some testing for the device, we uh, obviously wanted to test to make sure everything works, especially the sensors, since that was a big problem for us, since we didn't know exactly how to test everything. We didn't know what sensors to get. So what we did with the iterations is we tested sensors for sensor accuracy, wanted to fine tune some resistance values, make sure all the software was working, make sure all the hardware was working, and make sure that they actually could talk to each other. 
So in our testing phase, we did have a few issues in terms of our heart sensor. Our original heart sensor, unfortunately, wasn't giving us our correct value in terms of beats per minute of the user's heart rate. So we had to switch to a different um, sensor that was more compatible with the Arduino. And with that sensor, we were able to get a successful output. In terms of the temperature sensor, correctly giving us a Fahrenheit degrees in order in terms of the person's body temperature. The GSR sensor giving us a correct value for the skin response, which varies between person to person. One person's skin will have a higher resistance relative to another person. So we tested this on two and three different types of people, me, uh, Ben, and Caesar, in order to get that different kind of skin response. Um, in terms of our database, it was successfully, took some trials and error, but we were able to eventually successfully connect our you know, to the database with our with our server in order to output some of the information that we needed. And then lastly, as our full integration part, using all of the sensors database, we were successfully able to test it on me and Dan in order to output the desired value that we needed for our first phase. And talking a little bit more, there's a little demonstration, as you can see my hand over here, and there's one else. But as you notice, at my heart sensor, GSR and temperature, displaying the output here, as a, the, the output is being displayed according to my heartbeat very frequently and very rapidly. So the, the device is working tremendously based on the user and depends on the user's heartbeat in order to produce a certain output. Now, the connection to our database, we have another demonstration. So remember the three different PHP files I talked to you about? Well, let's see them in action and see what they do. So essentially, this is the Arduino code that's utilized to establish a connection in conjunction with info.php, and essentially what I'm going to do here is compile the code successfully and upload it to the Arduino board, and then we're going to see what happens in the serial monitor. As you're going to be able to see, we should get a connection established if our Arduino board is connected, is connected to our database. But you can see there, we have two different rows, because it, that's for simplicity's sake, that say that we have successfully established a connection between the Arduino and our database. The secondary step would be to process the data in the database and send it back to the Arduino, which can occur because we have a mutual communication channel that's established with this. As you can see right now, this is the current timeline of what we have completed so far. I will go over this very briefly. We have designed the inputs for the circuit, designed the code, made sure that our uh, sensors are working properly, and we have accomplished more than I anticipated on the database. We also have our timeline for what we will be doing next semester. We have to make sure that we got finish the database, finish, uh, make the outputs, finish the, uh, uh, build it all together, test everything, make sure it works well, and then we have a lot of time for testing the overall device after we encase it all together and the like, because we need this device to work in many different environments, so we have a lot of time dedicated just to that. As you can see above here is a small cost analysis. I have not put absolutely every fun, my new uh, spending on this because I do not know how much it will take cost to get a bracelet that uh, encasing for my project. That is actually a little hard to find and I don't know why. So that is currently unknown, but these are the materials we have currently spent on. These are current, our current, um, current components that we have uh, purchased. And as you can see, our total as of right now is very under budget, which is a very good thing right now. So um, moving on to some uh, conclusions and things we've learned throughout uh, doing this project. Um, me and Caesar in particular learned a lot about MySQL and database management, and um, we also learned a lot about fine-tuning of hardware to get us specific values that we desire. And on top of this, we learned how to communicate our ideas to each other, and we also learned some algorithm development. Now let's talk about the future work. Well, I have great expectations from a project, and I'm pretty sure the company will later on too. So we have successfully linked our output to the databases, but we still need to process the data, you know? Like, we've established a connection, but what can we possibly do with the data that's stored in the database? Also, we need to determine the algorithm to find the threshold value that's going to be applied for the different services that we have, and that needs to be predicted through machine learning, because applying machine learning will enhance the relationship 
that the different, like throughout time, that we're going to get for different data. And finally, we're addressing psychological aspects and we're merging them with engineering concepts. Isn't that like, well, that's revolutionary. Not many people have done that. And we attempt to solve the problem of mental health diseases as not many people address it currently. Thank you all for being here. And please feel free to ask questions later on. And just as a brief mention, we spent to the IEEE equals of ethics, making sure that class is safe, healthy, accurate. As we mentioned, we have the intention to help people with mental illness and in terms of anger management. And so we're we'll making sure that the device is beneficial for them and for everyone in order to maintain their well mental health. So specifically, um, uh, two of our uh, code of ethics, well, two of the code of ethics um, made by IEEE and SP that we are concerned with are uh, privacy and basically uh, not stating um, incorrect uh, assumptions about people. And I think that's important um, for our project in particular, and we address that by um, making it personalized as well as making it secure and um, using proven methods to reduce anger instead of being delusional to our customers. And this is our references and any questions if you guys have. We got nothing because uh, it makes my life easier. I have a copy of time to get off the stage now, so I guess we're going to get off the stage. High five. So no questions, guys? No questions. Hey, I'll accept uh, questions, answers, moans, groans, if you want. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming.